Thank you, everybody, for doing such a great job as we try to figure out the best way to do seating in chapel this year. It may be for the next week or two, I mean, the next couple of chapels that we'll still have a little bit of fine tuning to do, but thank you for your cooperation. I thank you also for coming in today and for showing such great respect, not only through your handsome dress, but your, and your, but your good behavior. And uh, it is a special place, our chapel is, and it requires the best behavior we can bring to it. Now then, since many of us are new to Cardigan, you may be wondering what to expect, or you may be worried about knowing the appropriate way to behave in a chapel like this. So I'd like to, before we begin, do my very best to put your hearts and your mind at rest. Whoever you are, wherever you come from, Whatever your faith tradition, or your religion, or your philosophy, or your worldview, you are welcome here. This is your chapel. You are always welcome. Be at peace. Welcome home. Mr. Elder, do we need to do anything about this speaker? Should I do it? Okay, this is part of when we're starting something for the first time, we sometimes have to make adjustments. Mr. Lister James does our sound for us. Can we see if we can get that? <laughs> Thank you for your patience. Technical difficulties. So everyone, the wise people who founded Cardigan Mountain School understood the importance of educating boys, not just in academics and in athletics, but also in character, in mind and body and spirit. And they also knew that it would be very important to minister to the faculty and staff members, the adults all around us, even as these adults minister to the boys in their care. And so this chapel building, which claims a prominent place right at the entrance to our school and our regular chapel services, were deliberately designed to ensure that our community would always be surrounded and encouraged and uplifted by love. And so it remains today. Our chapel is a place of peace. Love opens the door and invites everyone to enter into its welcome. So what can you expect? Throughout the year, you will hear from many different people, adults and students, who will share music and readings, reflections, art maybe, poetry, prayers from many different religious and cultural traditions. Perhaps you will be one of those to share your talents or thoughts in this place. I hope so. As we heard at dinner a few nights ago, our Jewish brothers and sisters are celebrating the new year according to the Hebrew calendar. This morning at breakfast, Lexi did a great job of sharing a blessing in Russian and yesterday's mealtime blessings were offered in Spanish and translated into English as part of our celebrating Mexican Independence Day. What a blessing it is to have such diversity. We love being a family made up of so many interesting and diverse individuals. That is every one of us in this room. And it is fun and it is important that we learn from one another. And that's what chapel is about. You can also expect chapel to be the place and time where we come together to share our challenges, our sorrows sometimes, and often our joys. Today, in fact, you may have noticed this beautiful pink rose here beside me, turn it towards you. Whenever a new baby is born into our community, we welcome our newest family member with a rose to honor his or her birth. 
This particular rose is in honor of baby Willa Lane Irwin, who was born on August 29th. We give thanks for her arrival and welcome her with great joy into our Cardigan family. The two senior leaders who were elected last year by their peers and the faculty to help promote and sustain the spiritual life of this school are Jalen Sinclair and Andres Pillon. These two gentlemen have already begun taking an active role in expanding their leadership responsibilities. And we look forward to following and supporting your lead this year. Please, everyone, join me in welcoming our fearless leaders for 2015 and 16. Thank you, brothers and other Cardigan family. As Dr. Perryman said, Andres and I intend to expand the position of chapel assistant beyond what has been expected in the past. We are a school that prepares boys in body, mind, and spirit, and we want to be the kind of leaders who inspire and equip everyone in the community to take active part in building spiritual life of our school. Already we are excited that students and faculty members are stepping up to the microphone to lead the community in our mealtime blessings. It is important to notice and be grateful for those things in our lives. Our goal would be for everyone in the school, whether student, adult, or faculty child, to take a turn leading our community in the blessing this year. We encourage you to send us an email if you'd like to volunteer. We want to make our school, and our chapel in particular, a place where faculty not only look out for the welfare of the students, but where the students look out for the welfare, welfare of the adults. In this special place, we all want to be treated not as teachers or students, but as people. As members of a family, we all have, we all have concerns and joys and need the support fellowship of one another. So one thing we value and ask of you is for everyone to gather a few minutes on the chapel lawn after the services to shake three hands for Cardigan and to encourage and check in one another. We also want to invite more participation from the community to help our chapel services run smoothly. For example, it would be great if different advisory groups could sign up to greet people as they enter the chapel. We want to thank Ms. Nye's advisory group for being the first to serve in this way. If your advisory group would like to sign up or serve as greeters, please send me or Jalen an email to let us know. Another one of our responsibilities is to make sure that you all are safe while you are in the chapel. So the first thing for us to tell you is what to do in case of an emergency. There are three exits from the chapel. The front doors you are entered, and the two doors to my right and to my left. If the fire alarm sounds, everyone in the front of the center windows would exit from the two side doors. Everyone who is sitting behind the center windows or in the back balcony should use the main doors. Please stay with your advisory group and walk quietly. Don't run to your assigned exit. We have a lot of more plans that we are excited to tell you about. Please watch your email for messages from us and keep volunteering to say the Milton blessings and serve as greeters of the chapel. As Dr. Perryman said, this is your chapel. So we are counting on you to take an active part in planning and leading our services and activities. Music is a big part of chapel. We love to hear from the students and the adults alike. Today, we are pleased to welcome everyone's favorite band, Grades and Comments. Grades and Comments is a cardigan tradition going back over 25 years, and they are welcome, and they welcome audience participation. So if we are invited to sing along or clap, please do so. So Grades and Comments, let's rock the chapel. Take it away. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you, grace and comments. It is a tradition in our chapel services to read one or two passages taken from inspirational works of writing, poetry, scripture, or song. Please listen and reflect on the wisdom of these words. The first reading is from the book of Psalms, number 121, verses 1 and 2. I lift up to my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord the maker of heaven and earth. The second reading is taken from a song entitled Three Little Birds by Bob Marley. Listen and take these words to heart. This is a message to you. Don't worry about a thing because every little thing is going to be all right. Don't worry about a thing because every little thing is going to be all right. And now please join me in the spirit of prayer or in quiet reflection. <clears throat> Dear God, we do thank you for bringing us successfully through the busy days of orientation and for the leadership of the adults and students who planned activities and information sessions to help all of us feel at home here as soon as we possibly can. Help each of us do our part too, to reach out to one another so that we can all feel very much part of our Cardigan family. We give you thanks for the birth of Willa Irwin and ask your blessing on her parents. Please be with Mr. Houston tomorrow and give him courage as he travels to Baltimore to complete his doctorate. We pray for healing for Mrs. Frieda Grace who has broken her shoulder, and please show us what we can do as part of her Cardigan community to demonstrate our care and concern for her and for everyone in our community. We thank you, God, for this beautiful, sunny day. Amen. When our Cardigan family gathers in the chapel each week, the first thing we do is open the curtains. We do that to reveal the beautiful view of the trees and the lake, for some of you can see that, and for some others can see the beautiful mountains beyond. 
But any time you come up to these windows up here on the chancel, you can see a marvelous vista. We come together to get inspiration and direction for the week ahead. But where does that inspiration and that direction come from? As Andres read a few minutes ago, the psalmist who wrote thousands of years ago wrote, I will lift up mine eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Instinctively, we human beings feel that there is something larger than ourselves to which we turn for strength when our own strength dies out. People throughout history have looked to the mountains as mystic places of perspective and strength. If you think about the ancient Greeks for a minute, where did their gods live? Anybody? Raise your hand if you know. Patrick? Olympus. Mount Olympus, up on those mountains. If you stop and think for a minute about the history that you know, history you will learn, mountains are places of great inspiration. And we are Cardigan Mountain School. We live here in the shadow of the beautiful Appalachian Mountains. And in chapel, we intentionally open these curtains on the big window behind me to draw our attention not only inward to ourselves, but outward. We do that to invite a greater perspective through which to view our own personal concerns and worries. The windows do the same thing. No one will ever get on you if you are looking out the window. It is a good thing to do when you're in chapel because it gets your mind out of your own head. Friends, Mount Cardigan is almost 500 million years old. When human beings, the first human beings, first walked the earth, Mount Cardigan looked very much like it does today. It has watched over generations of Cardigan boys as they toiled and triumphed below, and it will be here long after all of us are gone. This weekend, some of us will climb Mount Cardigan to watch the sunrise from its summit. When you get up there and look out at the vista all around you, your perspective will change. I hope you will take a few minutes as a group to just be quiet and take it all in. Your viewpoint will enlarge, your soul will expand. Hold on to that openness and perspective and bring it back down the mountain with you. It will serve you well in the challenging year ahead. Each week in the, ch in the chapel, we will open these curtains. We will lift our eyes to the mountains and we will open our minds to new ideas and expose our spirits to things that are greater than just ourselves. We will fill up our souls with love so that we can go out into the world and make it a better place for our being in it. Friends, I believe that the very same power, however one defines it, that loved Cardigan Mountain into being hundreds of millions of years ago is the same power that loves you and cares about you. Your families at home love you. Your Cardigan brothers and family love you and care about you too. Trust the power of love, boys. It is early yet, and you may not feel how much you are loved here, but you will. Because the Cardigan way is to love your neighbor as yourself. So as you go in to this next week with all of its assignments, its duties, its jobs, and its challenges. Don't worry about a thing. Because as Jalen read earlier, every little thing is going to be all right. Amen.
In a moment, we will, um, as we often do towards the end of each chapel service, rise and sing the cardigan hymn. But before we do that, we recognize that for a number of you, um, this is all brand new, and the cardigan hymn is not something that's as familiar to you. So um, with that spirit, in a moment, I'll ask Mrs. Perricone to play, and I will sing for you the first, first two lines of the cardigan hymn, or the first four lines, depending how it's printed in your book. And I'm just going to ask you to listen and see if you can pick up which individual words are being said, and then I'll read them and uh, talk about what they mean, and then we'll sing the entire cardigan hymn together. So just the first four lines. To cardigan our favorite school by nature's gifts benign, we raise in song our thankfulness for beauty which is thine. Just those first four lines. To cardigan our favorite school. We all know that this is cardigan our favorite school. By nature's gifts benign. Nature's gifts can be apparent all around us whenever we look outside. We raise in song our thankfulness. We are all very, very grateful and very, very fortunate to be here in this community. And this song celebrates that and has for many years, for beauty which is thine. As we sing today, pay attention to this part, pay attention to what the words may mean to you. And at this time we ask, in a moment we'll ask that we rise and sing the cardigan hymn. When we finish, just as we demonstrate everything else, we'll close very quietly the, uh, the hymnals and put them quietly back and uh, wait for the next part of our, of our service. So at this time, please rise and join in the singing of the Cardigan Hymn. To Cardigan, our favorite school, by nature's gifts benign, we raise in song our thankfulness for beauty which is thine. For winter snow, for afterglow, when day fades into dreams of goals toward which we all will strive to keep thy faiths alive, to keep thy faith in us alive, together we will strive. As cardigan is mirrored in a crystal lake so clear, may we life reflect thy truths and memories as dear. Of summer's green falls colors bright, of glimmering stars at night, God give us strength to carry on through storm or weather fair. The peace vouchsafed by living here for all the world to share. All right, the last part of our chapel services is, is that we always end the service with a benediction. Benediction, it means a good word. And the benediction that Mr. Scheiber and I will say in Hebrew and in English is taken from the Hebrew scriptures. This ancient blessing has been used for thousands of years in both Jewish and Christian settings, and it is one of our favorites here at Cardigan. After the benediction, please look to Jalen and to Andres, who are going to dismiss us by rows. And don't forget to shake three hands for Cardigan once you're on the chapel lawn. Try to make at least two of those handshakes, shaking hands with somebody you either don't know well or haven't met yet. Yivarechecha Adonai v'yishmerecha, ya'er Adonai pana v'lecha v'chunecha, May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.